No, nobody caught it. We're recording now, so if you don't want it to, to be seen, uh, you can go to the uh, block your video and uh, mute, that kind of thing. Mute's good if you got dogs in the background and everything. So anyway, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Lord God, we thank you so much that we have your word. We thank you that you love us. Lord, we thank you that you're here with us, that you never leave us, forsake us, uh, that we don't have to say, hey, Lord, be with us, please. The Lord will you be with us. We know you're already here. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that indwells us as believers, Lord God. We thank you for your mighty power that works mightily through us uh, and through using your word. Lord, we thank you that by your stripes we have been healed, that we are healed, and we just uh, need to learn how to walk in it. Lord God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for uh, this class and everyone here. And uh, would you speak wisdom as we go through, uh, speak against any distractions, and uh, Lord, that uh, as we go through the, just the words to say and, and to, to help folks out. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, last week, uh, what a class, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah. What, what, what did you guys uh, give me a couple of points of what really jumped out uh, uh, on that lesson? And the lesson was what? Can somebody even give me the title of what lesson one was? Miracles confirm God's word. Miracles confirm God's word. Still today, right? Yes. You know, uh, still, still, still the same thing today. That he he does use his word. We went over uh, different scriptures uh, out there. Can anybody remember one that we talked about? Mark 16. <laughs> yeah, I brought that one up. I sure did. So, uh, but we went through uh, a lot of them. Uh, Jesus yeah. going through talking to the sick of the palsy and that, uh, you know, he didn't differentiate, you know, uh, you know, he walked in the room and he, uh, or they dropped, lowered the guy down through the floor there. And uh, he said, which, which is, which is an easier thing to say that your sins are forgiven uh, or to rise up and walk. Right. I mean, that's, that's what he said. And, you know, you think about that for today. Um, what's easier for us to say? Anyone? Your sins are forgiven. Your sins. Hey, Delilah. Yeah, your sins are forgiven. Absolutely. Because we don't have to show anything, you know, and we have to think about this today as we're going and we're talking to people uh, when we're out and about and and ministering the gospel and telling people that, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, the son of God came, you know, and he paid for the sin of the world and, you know, it's tremendous news and believe on Jesus and all that. Uh, what gets us out of theory land, right? Yes, Jeff. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody? Anybody awake out there? <laughs> or, 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 or anybody home? You know, out there. Uh, but I didn't okay, even I think wanna... it was Tuesday today. <laughs> yeah. All right, Maria. Okay. Uh, I just want to throw through a few other scriptures in there. Everybody's got a copy of the lesson, but I just wanted to run through a few points on chapter one. Uh, that Jesus didn't uh, differentiate, you know, uh, uh, in scripture, you never see that sin and sickness are separated. The Lord never separates them. You know, religion does that. You know, we see in Psalm 103 that he's forgiven us of all our iniquities and healed all our diseases. You know, that's that's the same sentence right there. Uh, you know, and and what, what chapter one has gone through and, and kind of, impressed instead of looking forward to the future that versus jesus just being for the later you know we're reading john 17 3 that this is eternal life yes. knowing the lord and his son jesus christ it yes. is for the here and now and it's in that relationship uh that we glean uh you know just getting to know him as paul said we would say in philippians to know him and the power of his resurrection 
and and to, to grow in him that it's for today it's just not an escape valve for later that we can walk in now and i would like somebody to go through and and uh and read second peter uh chapter one uh one through four please and then i'm going to ask somebody else to read first corinthians chapter two uh verse one through five please and then I'm going to ask somebody else to read Romans 15, verses 16 through 19, please. Let me know when you get there. Who's got one? I've got right. it. Okay. <laughs> Come on. What you got? Oh, are you talking to me, sir? Yeah, uh, who's got First Corinthians chapter five, uh, chapter two, verses one through five? Oh, I thought it was Second Peter. Never mind. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, the Second Peter. I was you're so right. Forgive me, Maria. Go ahead. Second Peter chapter one. So we got the we we've got Second Corinthians coming up next too. Go ahead. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who, th through the righteousness of God, our God of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. For a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you have participated in the divine nature, having escaped the, the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Thank you very much, Maria. Good job. Good job on that. Oh, uh, what I want you to look at, I want you to highlight that one in your Bible or look at it. And when, when we look at that, we see that grace and peace is multiplied to us through what? Through the knowledge. knowledge. The knowledge. Okay. You want grace and you want knowledge? There it is. If you want grace, well, the grace is an abundant grace. We see in Romans 5, 17, it's the abundance of grace. But when we look at the... Uh, passage here we see that peter talks like he's talking to people who like precious faith we got the same faith peter has you know P peter's the one that there was no doctrine or anything like that written but they would lay people out in the streets and say peter's going from his house and he's going to the temple you know get your sick people out and and you know get close enough to him to be healed and peter's saying like precious faith the other side, we say that we've been given. That word given is in there a lot. We've been given. We've been given. We've been given everything, everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him and his son, Jesus Christ. That with this knowledge, we can participate in the what kind of nature? The divine nature. Divine nature. Not oh, yeah. the natural nature. In the divine nature. And the thing is, it's already been given, but yet we don't see it. Why is that? Different knowledge. Right? I mean, operating in a different right. knowledge from, than from what I'm saying, we only know what we know. Correct? Mm -hmm. And so, but the scripture has, if I look at my life, I tell Tommy all the time, where my last messed up, it's a head problem. It's right between here. It's not God. What that verse says that it's not on God's side of the equation. And that's great news. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's great news. That it's not, you because know, I can fix this. I can transform. I can, I can renew this and be transformed. But to, to stay where I'm at, and think, you know, we talked about last time about arrogance. But anyway, that's what I want you to get is that God has given us. We, we've been given the full package. That, that's what I'm going to put piece a few things together here. 
Who has uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2? I'll read it. Which, which verse? Yeah, it's chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Tom. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know, not to know anything except among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the power and of the Spirit, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We catch that? What was that scripture again? I've lost. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Oh, one through five. I put 15. One through five right there. No now, some, something that I looked at on this today. All right. The Paul says when I as well. And you can check this. You can double check it. But it's what hit me today. Paul's real good about giving credit when somebody's with him. Mm -hmm. But here he said, you know, like even at the first, he says from Sosthenes at the first letter as well, from him and Sosthenes. Here he says, when I, which makes me figure why he came with much trembling and fear because he didn't have an army of 500 behind him. When he came and preached the gospel, it was him right there. And the next thing we see is how did he do it so the Gentiles would believe? Tommy, you can finish that up. How do you do it? Yeah. In the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Hallelujah. How Amen. is she going to pull them away from the goddess Diana? How is she going to pull them away from everything they've known their whole life? Spirit of God. And guess what? We get to. Right? We get to. Okay, Romans 15, verses 16 through 19. Anybody? Romans 15. Romans 15, uh, 16 through 19. Okay, I can read it. All right, let's go. Ms. That John? I should be, yep, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may glory, I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. 19 as well? Yes. Okay. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. All right, you cut out, Johnny. Round up to, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you cut out there. Uh, at the end, but yes, yeah, in, in 19, he says, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem around down to uh, Acrylium, I have fully preached the gospel. And Paul's talking about signs and wonders, and they're, they're, they're together for us here today. So I just want you to see where, where Andrew's talking about, where it, where it you know, uh, they ha they haven't passed away. It's in your it's in your Bible too. That's why I'm having you guys look these up because some of this stuff you may, may not believe it, right? Right. Right. That's kind, of joke. That's kind of a joke. But if you read it for yourself, you'll see it's there. And some of these to highlight. Uh, and then I uh, I want to give a quick example. Is I got a friend of mine named Josh. Man, he was a 20 year old kid, maybe 20, maybe 19. He's got a great ministry now it's, this has been about 20 years down the road anyway uh we got genocide in sudan 
-hmm. and he goes there as a missionary and uh working work working with the uh sudanese that are coming in you know in in into south sudan anyway he's learning and he's going the first time he went to went there it was just kind of a servant mission that kind of thing he's you know helping take care of people and all that and the second time he went for the second tour well some things changed and uh, he went down into Uganda, and he went into a village, and he starts pre preaching the gospel down down there. And he's he's doing the full full gospel. You know, I mean, he's he's saying, talking about saying, you know, uh, healing the sick and this kind of thing. And they said, "Oh, well, you need to come meet." And you know, they call her Mama in the in the language. And uh, anyway, she had been blind and crippled for about 20 years and so he goes in there a little kid and lays hands on her and the first first thing she says is she goes you're a white boy she could see wow mm. that's good and then got her up and she was walking and I can't say all, okay, because I I, I I can't quite recall the story. But from what I remember, he goes, the whole village got saved. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. And that's the difference between theories and walking in signs and wonders. And even today, how much easier it is to preach the gospel and say, oh, what's, uh, what's wrong with your leg right there? Yeah. Oh, well, the only way I know how to praise in the name of Jesus, can I take care of that for you? Mm -hmm. You know, you believe Jesus take care of that right now? But he had told me, he said, he says, man, Jeff, he says the, this is when he was young, tell me, this. I mean, this is after he got back, he said it was so different, he said the Lord was so different between the first time I went and the second time I went. And I said, Josh, the Lord never changed. I said, what changed was you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, let's look up a couple more verses. Uh, Acts 14, 6 through 11. Acts 14, 4. A 6 through 11. Okay. Can you say that again one more time? Because I... Acts 14, Acts. 6 through 11. Acts. Yeah, 6 through 11. That's it. Got it? Getting there. All right, I got it. Acts 14. Okay, let's see. I don't have good light in here. Let's see. All right. Get out of here and the light. All right. And there, and the, uh, talk this Acts 14, start, I'm starting to set up. And there they preach the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. Okay, now what 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 are the what, what's Paul and the guys doing right there? They're preaching the gospel, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. The same Paul, uh, the same heard uh, Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, 
perceivingly that he had faith to be healed. And he said with a loud voice, stand up on thy feet. And he leaped up and walked. And when the people saw Paul, what Paul had done, then they lifted their voices saying, okay, all right, question. Where did the guy get the faith? Paul perceived that he had faith to believe this, to believe that he could be healed. Where did that come from? God. From hearing. Say that again, uh, Tommy. From hearing. Came hearing. from hearing. Yeah. So what was Paul preaching? The gospel. The gospel. And he, the, the guy believed that he could be, Paul perceived that he had the faith built up that he could be healed. In chapter one, Andrew was talking about that reason we don't have faith for it here in America because nobody preaches it. Mm -hmm. Right on it. You know, so now if we go to Romans 10, and this last one, I believe, Romans 10 right here, 13 through 17. Now, Romans 10, 13 through 17. Okay, it says, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear them without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? It is written, uh, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and glad tidings of good things. So the thing is, Paul was preaching, but yet we don't preach today about signs and wonders. And so people don't aren't they can't believe it if we if they don't know. I mean, take most of us back five, 10, 15, 20 years, and we, we only know what we know. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's right yeah. here in the word. It's 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 right here in the word, and it's an equal opportunity word for us to for us to dive into. So I just wanted to point those out. Those jumped out to me as I was going through lesson one. I was like, golly. You know, all these verses are just starting to come to my mind. And uh, so I wanted to bring those out. Could so, you say the what, verses again, please? Well, I'll say the what again? The verses again, First Peter what? Uh, Second Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Romans chapter 15, verses 16 through 19 uh and then we looked at acts chapter 14 verse 6 through 11 and then romans 10 uh chapter uh, verse 13 through 17 right there so anyhow like i say you go through you ponder and you really look at it uh and like i said you know last time when we miss the heart of god when it comes to healing we tend to miss his heart just about everywhere else that's when he becomes mysterious we don't know know about you know we you, you hear people saying they don't know about god and all that stuff but we do know so we've got another joinee okay all right questions on chapter one thoughts so jeffrey um i to clarify the scriptures we went to covered chapter one yeah that was going into chapter one just just some something else for you oh okay sorry i thought that we were going through chapters two and three tonight uh review chapter one uh -huh. which is done for a reason because nobody even knew what the chapter was about that's how <laughs> you know we, we we build on foundation here okay doesn't do it you, you got you got you got to glean as much as you can all right chapter two good job though Marie. good question um, lesson two then uh, looking at this first thing I want to start out with is 
the word atonement. Uh -huh. I don't know if everybody here even know what that means. Do we? Yeah. You know, okay. Well, I want to jump into it then. Uh, I like to look at it as the at one month. At one month, because that's when, you know, the Lord didn't come to change our lives. He came to exchange, give us an exchanged life for his life, you know. And so what I want to start out with this chapter, since we're talking about the atonement, uh, Tommy, will you read Isaiah 53, 1 through 5, please? Isaiah 53? Yes, sir. 1 through 5. Okay. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, on that, with, with the atonement and Jesus coming to, to take our place, you know, we need to look at it, and we talked about last time, when we read that verse, when we look at that verse, we have to look at that and say, that's absolute truth. I believe that. You know, if you go, well, you know, I don't know if by his stripes I'm healed really means that, or if it's more of a, you know, a spiritual healing, you know, that kind of thing. That's why you're sick. You know, I mean, that's, a, that's hard, but the thing is to disbelieve the word is to believe a lie by default. And then when we believe the lie, we actually submit ourselves to the liar. Somebody up out there? Okay. All right. Yeah, and Jeff, the, um, the actual the dictionary description of atonement is a reparation for a wrong or an injury. Thank you, Tom. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, now we're going to look at Matthew 8, 17, and Matthew 8, 17 is God's commentary on, on Isaiah 53, where it said, and I'm just going to read it for time, where it says he himself uh, bore, bore our infirmities uh, uh, for us, and our, uh, right there, and that's kind of a paraphrase right there, but he uh, he took it. It says he himself took it. And so that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read it. He said that, um, and then we're going to go to First Peter 2.24 after that, and then we'll start reading the lesson. That it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So that's God's commentary on Isaiah 53. And then in, in 1 Peter 2, 24, Peter comes along and says, by his stripes, we were healed. Mm -hmm. Versus Isaiah 53 is our healed. Peter, yeah. Peter put it into that it's already a done deal. And that healed right there that in Peter's uh, uh, that you read on that one there, that, that word healed with Pe Peter's things is used in 14 different occurrences uh in the new testament right there and every single time 13 times refer to healed physical healing physical and one time re refers to being made whole and so he was not talking about a spiritual healing he was talking about physical mm -hmm. right there hey man jeff boy the lord's awesome that <laughs> lord's awesome i tell you Give everybody a shot of coffee over here tonight. <laughs> I 
All right, let's go into chapter two and let's read. It's real short. Who'd like to start? Chapter I two. Can. I can do it. All right, come on, let's roll. If the body of Christ was fully presenting the gospel, the whole counsel of God, we'd be making much greater impact on the world today. God not only wants to forgive us of our sins, he also loves us dearly and desires to heal our bodies, bless us financially, and deliver us from discouragement and depression. Think about that. One of the main reasons why the modern day church has been rendered so ineffective and irrelevant in many people's eyes is they only preach the God or that God is for the hereafter. They've made relationship with the Lord a heaven and hell issue and haven't mm -hmm. preached that he loves us right now. They haven't taught that God wants us that wants to give us a dynamic and absolutely victorious life at the present time. They haven't ministered healing, prosperity, or deliverance. Some mm -hmm. statistics I've seen has said that as much as 85% of the population in the United States believes that there is a God, yet only 10 to 15% actually attend church on a regular basis. Yeah. Out of all these people who say they believe in God, would there be enough evidence to convict them if they were accused of being Christians? There's a huge gap between the people who say that God exists and those who enjoy a vibrant relationship with him. Why is that? Why do so many people who know God exist not go on to obtain this intimate relationship with him and make him the center of our life? Although there are probably several factors, one of the most obvious is that the church has presented relationship with God as a heaven and hell issue. They preached, just get your sins forgiven so you won't go to hell. All right. Uh, next, next, next section. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll read, Jeff. Thanks, you know. Even though, tr truly revelant, even though that's true, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to lose. And you must have your sins forgiven to escape hell. Most people are living in such a hell in this life that they aren't concerned with the hell in the afterlife. They're in strife during divorce, suffering from sickness and terrified of what's happening out in the world. They haven't heard or seen that the Lord deals with these issues in life, in this life. They just think that God is for the hereafter and they're short-sighted. They should be thinking about eternity, but they aren't because they're so occupied with trying to struggle through all the terrible things they're facing right now. They know God exists, but they put him off until just before they die because they don't see his relevance to their present everyday life. What if the church were to represent the Lord more accurately by saying, God will heal you and keep you healthy? He'll deliver you from depression, despair, and strife that you find yourself in. God will prosper you in a way that you could never accomplish just through your own effort. If we presented the truth that God is not only for the forgiveness of sins, but for all these other areas too, then people would see that he truly is relevant to our daily life. If a sick person came to one of many modern day churches, I use that term loosely, they'd ask, why are you coming to us? Go to the doctor. If a poor person came, they'd say, well, have you checked with the government agencies and tried welfare yet? If someone came who was diagnosed, depressed, I'm sorry, discouraged, depressed, and under some kind of demonic oppression, they'd refer them to a psychiatrist or other professional who would prescribe them some kind of a drug. But that's not the attitude God wants us to have. The church should be meeting the needs of people. Our lack of doing so is one reason that many folks see the church as irrelevant to their present life. 
They don't doubt God's existence. They just don't see why they need him until they get ready to die. That's wrong. Our example, Jesus, emphasized healing. I am simply following him. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed people. God the Father used these miracles to show people that Jesus had the power on earth to forgive sins. This confirmed Christ's message and proved the validity of his words. Since that's the way God did it for Jesus, I'm following a good precedent. A terrible signal is sent both to unbelievers and Christians alike when misled preachers say things like, God doesn't care about the healing of your body or he's putting sickness on you to teach you a lesson. That's absolutely untrue. Amen. Thanks, Gino. All right, next next section. And then we'll talk we'll talk about them all after these two short sections. Who's got the next next uh, section? I can read it again. Okay. My dad died just about a month after I turned twelve. He was in a coma for a period of time before that. So I went through the grueling experience of my father being on the verge of death for months as an eleven year old. The church that I grew up in said that the Lord put the sickness on him and it was God's will that he died. I don't, I didn't rebel against God because of that, but deep down in my heart, something about it just didn't sit right. However, I can give you examples of many other people who went through the similar experiences and did rebel. One fellow was very famous. As a young boy, he knew that God existed and even taught him. But his sister died, and the religious people told him that God did it. He turned completely away from the Lord, and today it is a very outspoken atheist. He cites this example in his life and says, You can't tell me that if there is a God, he would put sickness on people. This misrepresents re representation of God turns a lot of folks away from the Lord and embitters them against him. It's only the grace of God that kept me from rebelling when I was told God is the one who killed your dad. Many others haven't responded as well. Countless people know God exists, but for whatever reason, they just don't want anything to do with him or they don't see his relevance to their everyday life. That's why healing needs to be emphasized. We need to speak the truth of the whole counsel of God. Although healing shouldn't be elevated above forgiveness of sins neither should it be diminished below it jesus provided healing for us at the same time as he provided forgiveness of sins healing isn't just as add-ons or an added benefit that only happens sometimes it is an essential part of what christ came to do jesus died for the physical healing of our bodies just the same as he died for our forgiveness of sins the lord purchased healing for us just as he purchased forgiveness. It's all part of his atonement. Thank you, great job. All right. Would I like to wrap us up on this one? There's just a little second. Yeah, I got it then. That a, a done deal. Okay. This is the truth about, uh, this truth about healing is not yet widely understood and believed across the body of Christ today, which explains why so few people are walking in it. Most Christians think that God certainly could heal if he wanted to, but they don't see that he has already redeemed man from sick, uh, sickness and disease. They view healing as something the Lord can do, but they don't know for sure if it's his will. Is that a if it's his if it's his will if you recognize that healing is a part of the atonement which took place over 2000 years ago then you'll comprehend that the lord all has already has already has already healed you he's already purchased that blessing that power has already been generated healing is is a done deal and is available to you now exactly the same as forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. 
But if we don't know that, we don't know that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and and so, you know, to, like we looked at those verses, Isaiah fifty three one, you know, uh, one one through five, and we looked at uh, Matthew eight seventeen, and we looked at First uh, Peter two twenty four. There and then what's what's really neat is Isaiah fifty three starts out with who has believed our report, and when we read, read Romans seventeen. Uh, excuse me, uh, 10 there, and sent, finishing up about 17, it talks about who's believed our report uh, right there is, you know, who believes it. And, you know, to come into this, it, it, the question is now, what do you do with it? You're learning, but what do you do with it? You receive it. You know, you receive it. And and uh, and then you learn to walk in it, right? Like I said, we 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 mentioned last time, you know, don't start with big, you know, possibly big things. You know, start start with a headache, start with something like that. Uh, and 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 we'll get into more of that as the lessons go by. But what what I want us to look at on this, you know, a few things. Uh, and Tom, Tommy, Sandria, Gino, you know, any guys, if you. Uh, got something on this you know you know please feel free but when we look at this and we look at the way we pray and you know we had you know there's there's certain you know people say god's in control and we talked about that last time that that's the doctrine of devils because he would have never told you to put on the full armor of god he would have never told you to do things uh, uh, through the scripture uh, if he were running things like a puppet, you know, run, run, running things like a puppet master on everything. You know, he's, he's came, you know, Jesus came and ju- just as uh, they told, uh, the Lord told Adam to be fruitful and multiply, we're to do the same thing. You know, we're to take dominion. You know, he, he talks with, with, with Adam, he said, go out and subdue it. You know, uh, but yet, you know, we have a body of believers out there that go, oh, Lord's in control. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever is going to happen is going to, you know, I'm saying, well, the Lord must have meant for this to happen. And the thing is, you know, Hosea 4, 6, that's Hosea 4, 6 says that my people perish for lack of knowledge, you know. And and uh, as we mentioned last time, you know, out of John chapter 8, that, you know, uh, uh, if you continue in his word, you shall know, you shall uh, uh, become his disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make truth shall make you free. But it's only the truth that, you know, and you choose to believe that actually sets you free. You know, rereading John first, uh, first John four, uh, you know, John writes that we have known and believed the love that God has towards us. John knew it. We'll get into that one later. That's another another topic there. But you know, looking at this, if we're when we're praying, if we say, "Oh Lord, please heal me," Lord, just please heal me. What can He say? By my stripes you've been healed. Mm. Walk in my word. Receive it. Rebuke the adversary. He can't say anything else without being a liar. Or, you know, within that within that context, you know, he can't say anything else without being a liar. Because his word is written and it's forever established in heaven. Amen. So he's not the wishy one because we have his word and his word is settled. And his word is very, very specific. And I'll give this example, and um, you know, it it works every time. You do the word; the word is perfect. The work, the word works every time. And it's mm-hmm. like uh, it's just kind of my example: a, a, a plum jelly recipe. You know, and I'll give a quick example on that. You know, uh, my kids and wife and I went and picked a bunch of plums, and we we're going to make some plum jelly. And uh, just to give the kids the experience of it. And so we were, we picked the plums and we did all the things you needed to do and all this kind of stuff. And 
I got the sure gel package and I got the package and I read it, you know, about cooking the pectin in and all this kind of stuff. And I'm cooking it in and man, we had made these things and they're just really pretty jars. And I set them on the shelf and just really excited about them. And so about three days later, I'm going to check them. I'm going to get me some of this plum jelly. And it was the prettiest plum syrup you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> And I was so angry because, you know, Peckham's not cheap. And I'm like, you know, we spent all that time. We did all this kind of stuff. And it was a failure, you know, uh, unless you want to pour it over your pancakes, I guess. I don't know. It was just a mm -hmm. failure. And uh, anyway, so then I read the directions for the seventh time. <laughs> And I think it said something like, just cook the, you know, you, know, you cooks out there, don't quote me, you know, but it, it said something like, cook the pectin in for 30 seconds. And I did it for 30 minutes. Uh, that's a big and difference. And I cooked it all there. out. <laughs> but if I follow that plum, you know, jelly recipe right, I'll get plum jelly every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll never deviate. Just like baking, you know, that kind of thing. Baking is very specific, you know, in, in, in what you're what you're doing. If you mess it up, it's because you change something in the ingredients or you change your temperature, you change something like that. And, you know, the word of God, when it says, by golly, by, you know, by my stripes, you've been healed. There's no deviating from that. So when you get an ailment on you you don't go well lord i wonder what you what you know, I, you know you, and what he what andrew said there you know what he what people were telling him that the the uh lord killed his dad you know i had it uh, another thing with uh i had a bad back for eight years and i had loads of preachers telling me oh the lord's teaching you something oh yeah lord oh he's working it out and you well he's he's excrement <laughs> yeah that's what that is excrement because it's not the word i'm not saying they didn't mean well uh i didn't say i say, to say that they're not they're not nice guys but they're seriously anemic in the word traditions yeah. of men jesus, jesus said in mark mark chapter 7 verse 13 it is your traditions that make the word of God of no effect. That's right. Your traditions, what you're thinking otherwise besides the word, that's that's what's making the word of God of no, of no effect in your life. And that's why I wanted to go to that uh, Second Peter chapter 1 to show you that he's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness already. It's there. And if I'm not receiving it, it's not God. And I'm not, I haven't arrived. Mm -hmm. But the good thing to know is it's not God. It's right here. And I, I, I can renew this. Romans chapter 12. Questions on this section? I didn't have a question, but I did want to make a comment. I think you and I talked about this one time, that the reason like pastors and people like that don't preach the healing is they're they're afraid that if they do and somebody comes it might not work and they're going to look stupid or they're <laughs> gonna, it, yeah it's that fear that it just might not happen it might not work and then and then what am i looking like well and like what jesus said what what's easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk yeah yeah Right. You know, and I think a lot of them just don't know because, you know, it's it, it, it's just uh, to my knowledge, not 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 really emphasized. And you'll hear people diminish healing and all that kind of stuff. I know it's John G. Lake or Wigglesworth uh, was talking about that head. Hey, if you haven't read any of those guys, it's, it's uh, something to look into. Uh, was talking about that uh, a, a man had a son that uh whose 
skull wasn't growing with his body and his brain. His brain was compacting inside his inside his skull. And uh, somebody was telling about the miracles that 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 Jesus did and all this. And he says, "Well, if he could heal my son, I'd believe it now." And of course, I can't remember it was Wigglesworth or Lake, but they 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 got him healed uh, right there. And so this is what makes, I mean, uh, makes your obvious witness when you're talking to people. That's why you know, I, I've mentioned to some of you guys before, man, I want to go on Galveston Beach in the summertime and, and lay hands on the sick and you'd have a healing room down there during the summer. Six million visitors, mm. you know, and uh, healing the sick crosses all cultural barriers. It covers all different religions. You know, only way I know how to praise in the name of Jesus. You want to take care of that right now? What's that yeah. you say, Tommy? What do you say? Let's, let's just get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So, hey, Jeff. Yes, sir. Um, you know, in Romans 3, it says, let God be true and every man a liar. And when I first started, I was praying for everything that would stand still dogs, cats, you name it. And, um, and when I got to the point that I didn't care what I saw, what I saw was just an indicator to me on where I go from here. But when I prayed, I know, I know that the word of God is true. So I was going to let God be true and every man a liar, whether that person says that they, they, felt anything or not i didn't care now if if they received it right then hallelujah but if they if they didn't notice a difference i knew that there's going to have to be some education in what the word of god is and that's just kind of how you evaluate where you go from here but the big thing for me was um especially for this scripture it says let god be true and every man a liar i realized that some Sometimes, at least sometimes, and maybe most of the time, that liar is me. Uh, so when I determine that, when when I tell tell my foot to stop hurting, and it tries to argue with me, then I have to be determined enough in what the Word of God says that I don't care what you what you're saying. You are healed, and I'm going to keep telling you that until the pain is gone. The whatever, but. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of times that person that's lying to us is is our own flesh. That's really good. Amen. Yeah, Thank because you. we'll, we'll, we'll pray, pray over something and go, well, that, that, I don't feel, you know, or your body will start talking to you, that kind of thing, or you'll think, you know. Yeah, I like that, Tommy. Mm. Me you know too. I've been there so many times. That's why I really liked hearing that again. I do that. Same thing. Have done it. Where I listen more to what my line body, my line body is saying instead of the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do it right now. It's hard to believe. You've got to grow your faith in a word yeah but we're inundated with so much other stuff mm -hmm. you know and uh there's uh this is not my line but you know you know i do not listen to christian radio you know and uh and i say that that's just me but one guy was saying if you want to listen to if you want to be confused listen to christian radio because a lot of the songs are begging God. A lot yeah. of them are old songs of uh, uh, from David that that where he's, you know, hasn't, uh, you know, you got to put everything for us after the resurrection. That's where we're at, mm -hmm. right uh -huh. there. So we have to run everything. You know, we don't need to pray, Lord, be with us. That's an ignorant prayer. That's yeah. that 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 that's a prayer the Lord cannot answer. You know, because he's already told you, I'd never leave you or forsake you. 
Mm-hmm. So if you're praying, Lord, with me, be with me, you're just you're you're in unbelief. You don't believe He's already with you. He's already where we're going. You Amen. know. There you go. Yep. Uh, so any questions on chapter two? Lesson two, right there. It was kind of short, but I wanted to go over that atonement. Uh, something jumped. Uh, uh, thought about the other day that is in the early earlier church the church leaders is kind of funny uh, that a requirement for an elder in the early days was they had to be able to heal the sick because in James 5 14 it says are there any of you sick go for, go to the elders of the church and and uh, the prayer of faith, you know, they'll anoint you with oil in the prayer of faith, not the prayer of if it be thy will, but the prayer of faith, knowing God's will, knowing that it's been paid for in the atonement, casting that thing out, that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. But uh, today we don't see that, uh, you know, as a qualification for an elder that you have to be able to heal the sick. Just, oh, make coffee oh, and change, just make coffee and change light bulbs maybe but that was a joke just teasing <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. a but, lot of a lot of churches keep saying it's a dispensation for a time past you know uh, uh, you know and you will never you will never convince me that of me and that that's what this series is going to try to get you to uh because once you lay your hands on your first sick person and they're and they're healed or once you speak at your body somewhere and it quits or once you cast out your first devil nobody's going to tell you that stuff's not not for today mm. all the all the theological theory lessons that are out there and that kind of thing don't matter Because nobody's going to convince you otherwise. And that's what, you know, we look at in Hebrews uh, 5 going into 6. You know, he says that many of you should be teachers by now. That that you've been learning this stuff for a long time, but we keep going back to the elementary stuff of laying hands and all this kind of stuff. When we go, when are we going to go deeper? You know, that was elementary yeah. stuff. But he tells them it's because they've never exercised it's their faith. They've never exercised it for 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 uh, reason of use that they haven't used it. So they've just been hearing, 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 and then you become like a dead sea where nothing lives there because you're taking in, taking in, taking in, but there's no release. You're not putting it into practice. But once you put it into practice and you see the mighty power of God, there's nobody going to convince you otherwise because you've seen it. You've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And we're done. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we can get done on chapter three right here. Any questions on two or one or anything that we have so far? All right. No questions. Sandria, you want to start us in chapter three, lesson three? I think she dropped off. I don't see her name up here. Okay. All right. Who'd like to start us with chapter three? I will then. <laughs> All right. Sozo, lesson three. Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, brackets at the top, Andrews. All right. Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world, not just the world to come. Many people think that what Jesus produced through his death, burial, and resurrection only affects the spiritual, eternal realm. Because of this, they come up with song lyrics referring to when all of us will get to heaven. When all of us get to heaven, what a day that will be. 
Of course, it will be a glorious, it will be glorious in heaven, but Jesus also came to deliver us from this, this present evil world. We're not just saved from hell, our sins, and future punishment. Jesus came to deliver, protect, and provide for us in this physical world right now. Mm, sounds like good news to me. Amen. Man, good news of great joy for all people. Mm. Hallelujah. Who'd like the next one? I'll try. <laughs> all right, come on. An all-encompassing word. The Greek word sozo is I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's perfect. Perfect. Was used over a hundred times in the New Testament. It's all is an all-encompassing word for salvation, often rendered save or save. However, a closer look at how this important word was translated makes it very clear that our salvation includes much more than just forgiveness of sins. Mm. Sozo um, was translated save 38 times in reference to forgiveness of sin. Some examples include she shall she sat sorry, excuse me. She shall <laughs> bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save Sozo his people from their sins. Matthew 1 21 brackets are of Andrews. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. First Corinthians 1 21. Wherever he is able to save, well, did I say right? Wherefore? I'm sorry. I, I'm still under anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're we'll, doing we'll, good. We'll, we'll say it's there. <laughs> Go ahead. Then to the uh, uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hebrews 7, 25. All right. All right. I was Next. a little confused about the scripture um, there in the middle of the first Corinthians. Okay. Um, it, by the bullet, it pleased, pleased God by the foolishness of teaching. I, I don't quite understand that. Can you uh, give us some uh, God? Yeah, you, you're going to have to look at the rest of, chat, uh, of Corinthians chapter 1. And it just, okay. through chapters 1 through 3, it talks about how the uh, uh, wisdom of God is foolishness uh, to the people of the world. But that, that that the, the the folks that love the wisdom of men that they see the preaching is foolishness. Okay, so if I go back, just read read through all that. Yeah, like, read yeah, read First right. Corinthians uh, chapter one through three, and it it'll it'll help you a lot. Actually, one through four will probably be real good, but it's really good reading right okay. there. Let it soak in. Good good question. Thank you for that. Anyone else? All right, let's continue on and then we'll discuss. Nobody got the next verse yet? All right, I got it then. Forgiven, healed, and delivered. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Sozo was translated another 53 times as saved, past tense, in reference to forgiveness of sins. However, there were uh, also times where the exact this exact same Greek word was translated as healed. Jairus besought Jesus greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay, lay thy hands on her that she may be healed. Sozo, and she shall live. That's Mark chapter 5. Uh, this word healed is referring to physical healing. As in the story, as the story unfolds, Jairus's daughter actually died, and then Jesus raised her from the dead. Mark 5, 30, 
45 through 43. So in this instance, sozo, healed, refers to physical healing. Even physical resurrection from the dead. The same word that's used for both forgiveness of sins and physical healing also applies to deliverance of demons. Hot dog. They, okay, we're going to be looking at Luke 8, uh, 36. They also, which saw it, told them by what means that uh, was possessed of the devil, devils was healed. So, so. Mm -hmm. Right there. Awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Uh, commonly called uh, the gathering demoniac, nobody could hold this man. In fact, he often broke the very chains he was bound by. We're looking at Luke chapter 8 right there. Uh, sometimes deliverance from demons is necessary for someone to receive healing. This is included uh, in this word so-so. Let's see. Some people heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving, there's the one right there we just talked about, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Sozo. Right there. And then we saw what happened, right? The guy hadn't walked since ever in his whole life. He was lame from birth. Walked. Acts 14, 9. They held this crippled man, and he perceived that he had faith to be healed, and he was. Christ's saving power. James 5.15. It is a classic example of Christ's saving power manifesting in our lives both healing and forgiveness of sins. Looking at James 5.15 right here. And the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. In another instance, Jesus knew the thoughts of the scribes and Pharisees, so he asked, Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil, to save, so-so, to -so, save life, or to destroy it? Luke 6, 9. Once again, so-so. When they didn't answer, Jesus turned and healed the man with the withered right hand. Luke, Luke 6, uh, 8. And he wasn't uh, just talking about forgiveness of sins. He meant healing of the body right there. Uh, on that comes to my mind, we may have brought this up last time, but with the uh, prayer of faith right there, and one of you guys may be able to give me the scripture, but it talks about the law of faith. It's in Romans. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what you all, but. You know, kind of like we're talking about the plum jelly, it's got specifics. You, you, you do it specifically. You know, if, if I'm calling Tommy and I and I and I and I go for Tom, Tom, click Tommy, somebody else in my phone. Well, guess what? It's not going to go to this Tommy. That's you're on the call with us right here. Or if I'm dialing his number and I and I and I misdial it. I just misdialed it. It wasn't God that had anything to do with that. Uh, but the prayer of faith. Uh, a, in, in the law of faith, a law by definition, if broken, has consequences. Because a law is a law. It's established. If I jump off the building, that uh, tall building in Dallas where that, that really tall bit, law of gravity is going to kick in. It's a law. Right? Unless we, you know, I have some way to surpass that law with a greater law, which is the law of lift right there. But laws are in place, and we have the law of faith in place. Okay, Jeff, that's really more than I wanted to hear, but all right. <laughs> you want me all to right, made whole. Who's question? got that one? I'll read Same. it. Made whole. This same word sozo was also translated made whole in reference to healing. Consider the example of the woman with an issue of blood. Matthew 9, 22 says, but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, 
He said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole, sozo. Mm -hmm. And the woman was made whole, sozo, from that hour. In faith, she touched the hem of his garment and received healing. She was sozo, made whole. This is oh. the same Greek word that the synonymous, I can't get that word out of my mind, synonymous with mm -hmm. forgiveness, right? Is that what you did? Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Okay, did it. with forgiveness. A plus. Here again, it, it's applied to being healed physically. This same instance recorded in the book of Mark reveals that right before she reached out to Jesus, she said, if I may touch, but touch his clothes, I shall be whole, Sozo. Sozo was translated make whole or be whole 11 times in scripture. It's obvious from God's word that salvation isn't limited only to the forgiveness of sins. And Mark 6, 56 says, and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole, so so. When Jesus heard the news that Jairus' daughter had died, he answered him saying, fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole, so so. The Lord was referring to the healing of her physical body. Amen. Thank you, Gina. Anybody? I'll do it so you don't get on to me later. Ah, uh, there you are, Micah. Good to see you. <laughs> Abundantly supplied. Salvation doesn't only mean forgiveness of sins, but it also includes healing, deliverance, and financial prosperity too. Many in the modern church have interpreted salvation only to be forgiveness of sins, but that's a misrepresentation of what the Lord did. Forgiveness of our sins is certainly the centerpiece, and I'm not minimizing it at all. However, at the same time, Christ died to purchase our redemption from sin. He also freed us from sickness, disease, depression, and poverty. Se 2 Corinthians 8, 9 is very clear concerning the atonement and our redemption from poverty. For you know, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty may be rich. Jesus became poor so that we through his poverty might be made rich, abundantly supplied. Through Christ's death, burial and resurrection god has provided everything we need in this life and in the life to come forgiveness of sins healing for our bodies along with deliverance and prosperity isn't god good Amen. hallelujah hallelujah all right we've got 15 minutes uh, questions thoughts on what we just read concerns Go ahead. This uh, do the uh thing where it talks about where it, how many times it was translated, you know, in this uh for healing or in different aspects, uh, salvation and healing and even for casting out demons. Um, that's that was interesting to me. I never knew that. That's awesome. I'm, that's Thank you, yeah, but and, and hold on to that because here's what's going to happen with these lessons. And it's and, and and I'm not trying to jump on anybody, but it's kind of like that lesson one last week. Man, we had a great lesson. It was powerful. A lot of people learned a lot. And and uh, what we have is the parable of the sower on every one of these. And you got some people that are going to look at some of these things. And they're going to go, hey, I don't know if I really believe that or not. You know that kind of thing. And you know, they're not going to believe it at all. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're the ones on the uh, path. And then you got the ones on the stony ground. They, wow, man, that's a great message. I've never heard that before. I, I never realized that, that kind of thing. Uh, but they have no root of their own. And then so it, 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 you know, when persecution comes because of the word, they release it. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't have it. 
and then you got the one, you know, you get busy, you know, life's busy. I know I stay busy, that kind of thing and never revisit it. That's why I'm trying to get the repetition in, like with these little emails coming out, that kind of thing, you know, recording it, you know, just so we can go back and look at it to hear it more than once, you know. But we get, then the fourth soul uh, uh, soul type, uh, verbal soul, is we take that word, we nurture it, we get it, and we ponder it, and we think about it. And we go from here, kind of like what you're, this revelation you're having, which is awesome, we go, Lord, you know, just, just show me, you know, I, I see that's really neat. Explain, you know, and then stick on it for a while. Stay on it. Because another thing is distraction, you know, to, to, to gather a little bit of truth and then bounce to another truth real quick before this one becomes yours, mm-hmm. so to speak, before you, before, before it manifests in your own life. And that's what I think we see a lot of people today, even in, in you know, when I was preaching at the nursing home, uh, preach a similar message, you know, all the, you know, pretty regular, uh, cause it's relating to kind of this. And you'd see about week five, the light bulb starting to go off in the minds of the people. And you'll hear me repeat scriptures as we're talking, that kind of thing. It's cause faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Uh, again and again, and the thing we uh, contra- uh, have to watch in this thing is unbelief comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing things that are contrary. Yeah, you know, to the word of God. So good job on it. I'm glad you picked up on that. Uh, anybody else? All right, I'm going to go ahead and go down here to part where Micah read on it and it talks about the prosperity as well because that's going to kick a lot of people they're going to say oh what do you mean Jesus came to deliver us from the curse you know uh, but before they fell Adam and Eve had no lack at all you know and with what we see with sickness like I say we should see a a different world if we were walking and in, in, in what and in what he has provided us but we don't haven't been taught to walk in it but now we know and we know different and so the thing thing is poverty that's just that's just a uh, another form of oppression yeah. who's got Isaiah 61 for me Nobody got that one memorized? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? I don't mess I, it up. I've got it. Isaiah 61 what? Uh, 61 1 through uh, half a 2. Okay. The Spirit yeah. of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and the opening of of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. That's, that's good right there. Yeah. Uh, We're proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. That's where we're at right there. And the thing is the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, question is the spirit of the Lord upon you. You know the answer. Yes. What's your mission? Tommy, you read that one again up to the acceptable day of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. Sure. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. All right. Please, spirit of the Lord is upon you. You know, it says in Acts 10, 38, that uh, Jesus went about doing good and uh, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Right? 
Acts 10, 38. Mm -hmm. Is the Lord with you? Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's good news. Hallelujah. He's with me. <laughs> My dog. That's good. That's good news. Not to scare you. <laughs> Awfully quiet out there. Uh -huh. That's the All good right. news. But we're not doing that. What's that? We're not doing what Jesus wanted us to do. He's not do, doing what he wanted us to do. And, 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 you know, it's been a misconception, you know, or a mis, mis ideology. And, and it's, and I'm borrowing this from somebody. Uh, but you look at Jesus and man, he won all his battles. You know, Jesus, I mean, I just, Jesus, the Lord wanted Rambos <laughs> to go out and, and, and stomp on the devil's neck. Amen. But that's not exactly what he got. I was apologizing to him today about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of Christians these days, and and I can say this because I was one of them. I was born, raised in church, raised my children in church. I was a single mom raising two kids by myself. Went to church every time the doors was open. Um, and it was not. I mean, always a lot of times we'd come in from church. Guess where we left our Bibles in the back seat. If we did bring them in, we laid them on the catch all. And they sat there till it was time to go back to church. Mm. So, and then, you know, in all of this time that I was doing that, I thought of myself as a great Christian person. Um, and I just realized one day, I'm not doing what God said to do. How is it? You, 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 you You've got to get in the word. You can't leave your Bible in the back seat of the car until you go back to church again. Can't leave it on the kitchen table and let it collect dust. You got to be in it. If you want to serve the Lord and serve him the way he wants it done, you got to know what you're doing. Mm. And the only way you're going to do that is by being in his word. Being in his word. And it's an equal opportunity word. Yep. And I mean, that was just a huge revelation to me. Is I have wasted so many years just thinking and being deceived and not knowing because I was like, I had lack of knowledge because it didn't apply the word to my life every day. Wow. Well, look at you now. Here you go. I, hey, I'm a baby Christ now. I yeah. thought I was, a, I thought I was a mature Christian back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you find out sometimes it'll humble you. It really will. Yeah. <laughs> well, howdy. we're all grown. We're all grown. That's, that's, that's all. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, we can go through the questions. Or uh, if anybody else have anything else, can I say something? Uh, sure, you can. You bet. Uh, I oh, I always thought growing up in church as I did that, listening to the to my pastors and the other elders of my church was enough for me to learn the scripture. I didn't think I had to learn it on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think everybody's probably in that camp. Right? We are, believe me. I mean, you, mm. you 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 look at people as an authority, and you figure they know and they should know. And uh, you know, the you, you really have to be careful. You know what you, what you're taking in. Uh, like I say, because you could have tears plant. You know, those tears will get planted in, and you got to pull them out and. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know how many times, you know, we'd be at church with, uh, you know, my kids and something be said, and, you know, Tommy and I have to talk about this. And don't, don't listen to that. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> That's not right. You know what I'm saying? And, and just tell, tell the kids, you know, you'll talk about it when you get home. But if you don't know the words for yourself, uh, you'll believe anything. And I've said it for years that the preacher, uh, that's the most dangerous person in the room. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or the most helpful. Because you're you're allowing access to the way you think. 
Okay. And so, no, uh, way. you know, and like I say, and the thing is, for me, I, I'm not mad at these guys, you know, any of that kind of thing. That a lot of them are very sincere, you know. You 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 know, they love God, all this, but uh, you know, a deceived person doesn't know they're deceived, or they wouldn't be deceived. And it says in Isaiah 44 that they're running with ashes in their hand. You know, they're they're after it. You know. Uh, but it does nothing. And you can yeah. be sincere. You can be so sincere, you know, sincere about it. And man, really, you know, just press and be sincere and be sincerely wrong. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. Have you guys ever said it said it heard a preacher's word and it and it was. I I guess you would call it an alternative gospel. Uh, yeah, for about twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yes, sir. What's I, alternative? I was gonna say I sat in church hearing the preacher say that God needs to put us like in the oven and, and bake us until we, you know, and we need to ask Him to like almost like punish us to wake us up and it was unbelievable like it, there wasn't anything about the word changing you it was like you better like ask god to just like beat you to till to, to a pulp until you change oh yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot of that out there that he uses circumstance to to uh mold you but the the less we do the the word uh the more we by default, find, do our own way. And, you know, Lord didn't cause me to jump in that mud hole. Mm -hmm. I had all by myself. You know, uh, <laughs> you know he, he, he uh, had nothing to do with that. You know, and that's what I say. He's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him and his son, Jesus Christ. And that's Second Peter chapter 1. Uh, so if my life's not reflecting that, you know, that's it, you know, uh, right there because he's already given. Now, he's told me, uh, and I can say this because it's in his word, he's told me to put on the full armor of God. He's mm -hmm. told me to do that. He's told me to submit to him and resist the devil. He's told me I've had, I have an adversary. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raised I, in a den denomination that taught us that we were not to read the Bible because we wouldn't understand it. No, I think I, I don't know just where you read. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've not ever heard of that one. That's kind of a new one here and that, that they discouraged you from reading it. Mm. Oh, yeah, we were told not to read the Bible because we would not understand it. Yeah. Wow. But mm. with some of that, the the uh, uh, a lot of this, what we're going to go through here on, on, on work, to, like, so you're going to read something, you're going to look at some of this stuff, and you go, ah, yeah, I don't believe that. Ah, that doesn't, you know, there's going to be something that's going to hit you along the way, but you're just going to have to take the position that as a student, and say and clear the slate and and take the position that I don't know anything, you know. And like we said last time, what you're doing is working. Do it, you know what I'm saying. But if it's not, be willing. We'll be willing to to change change our minds on things because a lot of what we're doing here is is we're detoxing. I mean, you go to Matthew fifteen thirteen, talking about being wax dull. Uh, you know, that they've had their hearts waxed dull. And if they would, if they would hear him, you know, he would convert them and they'd be healed, you know, but the fact that it's been told, you know what waxing is, you know where that wax doll comes from? Rose. Oh. Making candles. Oh. What they do, they get the wick, they would get their wick and they dip it in the hot wax mm -hmm. and it'd wax over and then they'd get it again and they dip it in the hot wax. And they get it again and they dip it in the hot, you know, like that. Anyway, it'd be waxed dull. Sounds From pain. again, the repetition of hearing the non truth. 
And so that's the biggest thing here is, is we know God's on our side, right? Do we gather that from this, from this, this lesson, mm -hmm. right? He's given us yeah. everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him and his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we looked over the atonement. We looked over in chapter one that he, um, uh, has empowered us to do mm -hmm. things, walk by the spirit of God. And the thing is, when Paul's talking about the, the wisdom of words and uh, he, he did it in the, uh, the power and demonstration of the spirit versus, versus just the wisdom of men. When you look at Matthew 8, uh, excuse me, 10, 8 through, sorry, back at late, Matthew 10, verses 7 through 8. Mm -hmm. As ye go, preach the kingdom heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers. Freely you've received, freely give. Okay. Every single one of those things. Now, let me rephrase. You can you can write a nice sermon and go speak nice without having the Spirit of God. Yep. You can do a lot of uh, volunteer work without the Spirit of God. But you cannot yeah. do the commands of Matthew 10, 7 through 8 without the Spirit of God. Okay. Hallelujah. We got the <laughs> Spirit of God. He's in us. We can do it. Amen. We he's <laughs> equipped us. Hallelujah. Wonderful. I mean, this should be good news. It is. And I don't want you to look in the past, where you come from, all that kind of stuff. I want you to start today and say, how do we apply these truths today? What do we do today? And the Lord loves you, you know. But when you do the word, you'll see the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. So questions? I think we're at 11 o'clock. We're at 11.04. My apologies. Questions, anybody? Okay. Nope. We're going to stop the recording. Anybody wants to stay on for a second?